basically only two different types of fonts, either block or stencil. For these examples, we'll be using text with a 6 inch height. You can create the text by going to the Geometry tab and choosing Text. Select the type of font and you can view it in the sample window below. For this video, I'll be using Stencil and Roman. I'll set a 6 inch tall height and I can choose to have it come out on Text, Dimension or Geometry. We want it to come out on geometry like we normally cut shapes. However, for this example, I'll leave it on text and we can change it to layer geometry later. Choose OK and then click on a location on the screen and begin typing your text. When you're finished, choose Escape or right click with your mouse. Now we can choose Change to change the layer text to layer geometry. Click OK, select our text, and finish. With our letters on layer geometry, they're just simply lines and arcs. Modify as you wish. Engraving on the center line is the easiest. The center of the tool will follow each line and arc in the text. Here we see the finish when we select a V-Bit tool. And here are the results of selecting a flat end tool on the same geometry. We don't even need to change tool direction if we're going to program centerline. You can verify the tool direction by turning on the ghost tools. The arrows show where the tool will start and that it will not run to the left or right side of the line. We'll be using three different tools in these examples. The tools must already be entered into your tool library. If they're not, watch the video called Creating a Tool in AlphaCam. Double click on the name of the tool to select it. Then click anywhere in the drawing space to complete the selection. Next, choose the cut shape icon and verify or change the settings as needed. On the type tab, we should have both vertical and selected checked. Under the general tab, we'll set tool center and roll round and verify that our engraving bit is selected. All the references under the Levels and Cuts tab are from the machine's working surface to the tool's zero point. We'll switch to a side view to better understand. Here we can see the working surface or machine zero is at the table of the CNC saw or at the top of a pod for a router. These type of tools are touched off or referenced from the tip. so the tip of each tool becomes the tool zero. So all values that we enter into the levels and cuts will be the distance from the work surface or machine zero to the tool tip. So this would be zero and this would be 3cm or 1.2. When the machine rapid traverses I would want the tip of the tool to be anywhere between 3 and 5 inches above the working surface or bottom of the material. And I would let it wrap it down to two inches. The top of the material is 3cm and the purple line represents the depth at one inch. So in total, I'll be removing about 0.2 inches of material. Because of the tool manufacturer's recommendations to only remove up to one eighth inch at a time, I'm going to do it in two passes. I'll also leave the depths of a cut set to equal, so I am removing less than recommendation. 
enter all of your level and cut information to accommodate your material, its thickness, tool heights and levels to achieve the final results you wish. Leave all the stock settings under the Machine Data tab. Make sure Apply Lead In and Lead Out is unchecked. You can change any cutting information at this time. I'm going to turn Flood on for this tool. With all the settings correct or verified, click OK and select the geometry to be cut and then follow through with the finish. You can see the multiple passes if you switch to an isometric view. And you can also see them in simulation. I like to use the wheel to find the simulation panel. I'll right click on the screen and then I'll choose the expand out arrows so I can find the shade solid simulation. This will both shade your material and open up your simulation panel. Press the play button. I already have the speed set high. When simulation is completed, you can click on the icon it left in the top right corner of your screen. You can also use the icons on the simulation panel. Simulation requires a material blank. If you don't have the gray box representing the material blank, you'll have to make one. Go to the 3D tab where you'll find Set Materials. When chosen, it will guide you at the bottom of your screen. Select the geometry you want to become the blank. In my case, it's the rectangle. Then fill out the properties. The material top should be the overall thickness of the material entered as a positive value. Entering a value in the XY stock will make the material that much bigger than the geometry you selected. Click OK and Finish and you have a material to be used for simulation. After verifying the program through simulation, you can turn the simulation off and then send the G-code through your normal toolbar. You can also pocket the text out. In this example, I'm using two different tools, a half inch flat and a quarter inch flat. The quarter inch is making a final cleanup pass. Start by creating block style text. Keep in mind the size of tools you have. I'm using a six inch tall letter with this style of font. You can see there's large areas and small areas. The small area, I'm going to need a tool smaller than a half inch. I'll prepare this geometry starting with going to the machine tab and setting tool direction. This block style text is made up of closed geometry. I'll go to the closed geometry section and I'll choose inside and directly across from that counterclockwise. Then I'll choose to manually select the start point. After I've chose these three settings, it says at the bottom of the screen to select where I'd like the start point. I'll pick on the outside line of each shape. As I do so, an arrow appears to the inside of the shapes that I select to show me where the tool will run on the shape. The letters BOB -B and BOB all have islands in them. I'll set the tool direction so the tool stays to the outside of these shapes. I'll choose outside and clockwise. Then I'll select the shapes and see that the arrow appears to the outside of each one that I select. After you set tool direction on every shape that you'll be cutting, 
you can close the tool direction window. This will show the arrows going away, but they're simply being turned off and the properties still remain. If you would like to verify that tool direction is set, you can turn on Ghost Tools. Here we can see that tool direction has been set for each geometry that we're going to cut. Now we can apply the tooling information for the pocketing. Choose Select Tool from the Machine tab and then of the tools to be used, I'm going to choose the largest, the half inch, to remove the majority of the material first. Double click on the name of the tool and then click anywhere in the drawing to insert it as active. Choose Pocketing from the Machine tab. The settings in Pocketing are similar to that in Cut Shape. We'll start with the size vertical and only the geometry we select. Under the General tab, we'll verify that we have the correct tool selected. We'll choose the type of contour so that the tool will follow the shape of the geometries. For final pass around islands, we'll choose full. The islands would be the centers of the letters BOB. And then we'll select start cutting at inside. We'll leave the other checkboxes unchecked or unselected. The Levels and Cuts tab is identical to the cut shape that we covered thoroughly earlier with the engraving portion of this video. I'm going to leave my settings similar to that. I'm going to leave some stock to be left. The amount you leave depends on how rough the tool is. I'm going to leave about 20 thou to be cleaned up with my quarter inch finish passes. I'll leave the width of cut to its default and you can verify or correct any tooling conditions before you apply them. And now click OK and as prompted at the bottom of the screen select the geometries that you wish to be cut. Select all of them and then finish. You can see from the toolpath which represents the center of the tip of the tool what material has gotten removed and where the tool wasn't able to fit in. It's also nice to be able to see your cuts being applied in your order of cuts or operations panel. I'm going to run a second pass with a smaller quarter inch tool. So I'll choose pocketing again. Under the types tab everything will stay the same. Under the general tab the first thing I might do is change the tool. I'll go pick my quarter inch cutter by double clicking on the name and then I'll click anywhere in the drawing to insert it and make it active verify that that's a correct bit and I'll use the same settings as with the last cut under type contour for final pass around islands full start cutting at the inside and you can change the start point if you wish by checking this box I want to take in count of previous machining then I don't have to redo all the work that the half inch tool did and I'll include an additional rough or finish pass. I'll leave levels and cuts the same as before. Machining data I will leave some stock to be left. Since I left about 20 thou from the half inch tool I'll leave 10 thou from the rough pass of the quarter inch tool. And again, you can change any tool information before you apply the cut. When we press OK, we'll have to fill out the information for the cleanup pass. Because we checked the box, include additional rough finish pass from the general tab. 
This brings up the same cut shape window that we used with engraving with the V-bit. I'm going to use the same tool and I'm going to verify that it's using machine compensation. I'll leave the other settings the same. Under level and cuts, I'll leave those the same. I'll leave the stock to be left zero under machining data. And I don't need a lead in and I don't need to change any tool information. With that, we'll click OK and be prompted to select the geometry to cut. We'll select all the geometry that we cut before and follow through with the finish. The new toolpaths will be a different color because we chose a different tool. You can turn operations on and off in the project manager panel. If we uncheck or turn off the operation with the half inch tool, we can see what the quarter inch tool did. I'll turn on all toolpaths and zoom out and run simulation. We'll see the half inch tool remove the majority of the material first. Then the quarter inch tool will come in and get what the half inch tool couldn't get. And finally, you can see the cleanup pass where it's only removing the ten thousandths. If the simulation looks good, you can send the program to your machine through your normal send G code button. Thank you for choosing Park Industries. Thanks. <laughs>